Hi everyone, welcome to my home. It's a beautiful Sunday over here. It's really sunny outside. So that's why I thought I would sit in front of my garden. We have this garden, which is really, really tiny, but it suits me because we don't have a lot of time to, to take care of it. So, but I love having it anyway. Anyway, um, today I want to talk about a special topic called dying to be you. So instead of dying to be me, it's for you. It's about dying to be you. Uh, and before I go into it, uh, please let me know if my sound levels are okay, if the video looks okay, can you hear me, can you see me? If there's anything um, that's, that's not quite working, let me know because we only realize it from your feedback, how we're doing. Uh, and also, you know, just pop in, say hey, and later on I'm going to go into questions. But what I love um, is questions that directly relate to the subject, and you'll know more about the subject as I talk about it. And while I'm at it, I just want to also say I apologize to the people whose questions we don't pick up or we don't see or we don't take. I do go back and read later and then sometimes I'll pick a few questions which I then address the following week, which is what I'll do today. It's really hard to actually catch everyone's questions because the comments move so fast while the, um, you know, while we're actually broadcasting. So anyway, uh, I see a comment from Kelly Deegan. Hello. Hi, Kelly. Um, so. Today, um, I'm talking about dying to be you. And the reason for this topic is because I, get a, I still get a lot of people who write to me and they say things like um, they wished they had their own NDE in order to understand or in order to get the level of understanding that I speak about. And so one of the reasons that I share what I share is because I believe it is possible for you to get that level of clarity without actually dying. That's why I share it. If I didn't think it was possible, I wouldn't be here telling you and making you feel frustrated. And because I share it, not because I want you to think, hey, I got that level of clarity and like, nee, nee, boo, boo. no, that's not the reason why I do it. I do it, I share it because it's like, okay, I know what happened and I think everybody can access it. That's why I share it. Um, and people, a lot of people who have read my book actually write to me and say, thank you for explaining it. I get it. Um, and it changes their lives and it gives me a lot of satisfaction to hear that. But I still get a lot of people who say that it's easy for you to, to experience what you're experiencing or for your life to go the way it is, or for you to understand, but you died. Um, for us without having had that experience, how can we have it? So that's what today's topic is about. And my belief is that you actually can die to who you are. Judy Hong has commented, you look and sound perfect. Thank you, Judy. By the way, Judy, thank you for everything you do. Judy translates my videos into Chinese. She puts Chinese subtitles on them. So please check her out, please check out her YouTube, but we will be including those subtitles on the videos on my YouTube channel. So thank you, Judy, for everything you've done. Um, really, I am so grateful to you. Um, so anyway, I actually believe it's possible for you to die to the person you were yesterday, up until yesterday. So here's what I learned while I was in that near-death experience. Um, that leads me to believe that we can all die to who we were and be reborn if that's what we want. So this is what happened to me. I literally died to the person I was. I was this person who was the people pleaser, the doormat, uh, the one, the person who got so drained and so tired and who would feel so guilty doing anything for myself that it took cancer for me to actually start taking care of myself. And even then I worried more for other people than I did for myself. Even when I had cancer, it was more important to me that other people perceived me correctly or that I wasn't misinterpreted or that I still worried more about what other people thought and felt than I did about taking care of my own well-being. And it only took death for me to understand it. But here's 
what I understood in death. What I understood is that who I was before was shaped by my past conditioning. And here's the thing, my past conditioning was beyond my control because you are born into it. You may have chosen it from before you were born, but from the level of this perspective, everything that's happening to you as a child, as you're growing up, things that you're buying into, things that you're believing, things that you're conditioned to believe, none of it is your fault, but they become the filters through which you start to view the world. They become the filters through which you shape your life. Tell me if you think I'm making sense. So here's what it is like to give you a solid, a tangible example. For me, I grew up in a culture that was not my own culture. So I looked different. I was bullied at school because I looked different. I was darker skinned. I was hairier. You know, I had more facial hair and hair on my arms and, and my hair was frizzier and I was darker. And so I looked different and I was bullied for that. And it shaped me into believing that my physical appearance was inferior because of my um, because of my color, because of the color of my skin, because of the way I looked. I remember one boy when I was a kid, he actually said to me that I was ugly and that stuck with me and I really, and I believed it. And so what does this do when you start to believe things like that? What it does is that it makes you hide. It makes you shy away from other people. It makes you afraid to be seen as opposed to wanting to be seen. So it changes who you are, but it also changes your experience of the world. Now imagine if you look, um, if you are somebody whose appearance that everybody around you approves of and is attracted to, and people are saying, oh my gosh, you're so cute, you're so beautiful, you're so gorge gorgeous, you're so amazing. What that, what that does to you is that it makes you want to be seen, it makes you want to attract attention. And of course that could bring about its own filters and its own layers and its own problems maybe later in life that maybe as you lose your looks and you're not a scene, it might bring about an insecurity. But here's the thing, as we're growing up, we can't control that. But as adults, we still carry that baggage with us and we don't realize it. And we think that what we see is the world around us. We think we're seeing the truth, but actually what we're seeing is through our own filters. So let me give you an example. After growing up being discriminated against for the color of my skin and uh, believing that, it, that I was inferior for being, for being browner than everyone else around me or being darker than everyone else around me, um, Let's say if I'm getting on a, a flight or something and I, get, uh, and I get singled out for a random security check, my head is immediately going to think, oh, it's racial profiling. Now it may truly be a random security check, but my head is going to assume it's racial profiling because I've been racially discriminated up to that point. And this is what I mean. So you start viewing the world through these filters and your experiences of the world will start to mirror those filters because as I said, if you don't want to be seen, you will not be seen. But then when you notice the people who want to be seen are the ones that are getting chosen and maybe it's got nothing to do with your appearance or maybe as an adult, people don't, you, you know, notice your appearance anymore or you, you look different as an adult because as I grew up, I did actually start to take more of an interest in how I looked and I, I did actually, um, let's say, remove the extra facial hair and, and had my hair done in certain ways, which looking back, I don't think I needed to. However, I wanted to fit in. But what happens is even if I were to look stunningly beautiful, at some point, that conditioning has already been done. It's implanted. I'm still going to view the world through those filters and I'm still going to process my experience 
through those filters and I'm going to try harder than the person who never got discriminated against. I'm going to try harder than them to fit in. I'm going to try harder than them to be more like them. And this is what we end up doing. So what I'm trying to say is, so now let's say as an adult, I'm not being discriminated against, but I'm going to assume I am. So I'm going to hide or be more invisible while someone else who's never been discriminated against is going to be more visible because they're not afraid of being more visible. And they're the ones that are going to get picked and chosen for the part in the movie or um, for whatever reasons. They're the ones that are going to get heard. They're going to get seen. And that will continue to fuel my own belief that it's because of my color that I am being treated inferiorly. Does that make sense? In other words, I'm bringing it on myself by hiding, by making myself smaller. I'm bringing it on myself because I believe that I am inferior and less than, because I don't want to be criticized. I don't want to be hurt. It was so hurtful when that happened to me. So I'm going to protect myself with this layer of coating. And so as I do that, people don't see me and then it feeds into those beliefs. And this is how we create our reality and our world around us based on our past conditioning. What happens is that if you decide to die to your past conditioning and you decide to just wake up with a fresh clean slate and see the world for what it is through clear glass filters with no different colors and layers and things added to it, you will see a very different world. And I promise you, you will. And then you can decide who am I actually and how do I want people to perceive me? And you can then choose to add what you want to add. Because remember, when you were a kid, you didn't have a choice. You were being shaped by the environment around you and you just believed it. You bought into it, into your education system, your peers, your schoolmates. You just wanted to fit in. It was a survival mechanism at that time. If you were being hurt, you developed layers so to protect you from being hurt. So it was totally a survival mechanism. Today, as an adult, when you can see that's what it was, you can choose to put that down. And that's what having the near-death experience was. It was putting all that down. It was seeing that it was all the accumulated layers and coming back reborn with a clean slate as an adult and deciding what I wanted to take on. An analogy I like to use, which as I've told you, I'm writing my third book, which is called Sensitive is the New Strong. I actually describe this by using the analogy of if you imagine that you are carrying, as an adult, you're carrying this backpack with say a 20 pound bowling ball in it. It could be a 15 pound bowling ball, 20 pound bowling ball, and you're carrying this backpack every single day, every single day, and you don't put it down. And you look around you and everybody's got their own backpack. Even when you go to sleep, you literally, it just falls off your shoulder when you fall asleep. But when you get up in the morning, you're like, okay, where's my backpack? And you put it back on. And you go about the world and you go through life carrying this backpack with this 20 pound, 15 pound bowling ball. But as you look around you, everybody around you has this backpack with this, with a, uh, has a backpack. Everybody's backpacks are different sizes, different shapes, different colors, you know, depending on their upbringing and their dramas, but everybody's got a backpack and everybody's bowling ball or, every, or the weight of everybody's backpack is different. Some have a 30 pound backpack, some have 20, some 10, some 15, but everybody's got that dang backpack weighing them down and they're trudging through life going, oh my God, life is so hard. It's just so hard. I have to shoulder all this pain and responsibility and all these problems and everything. Now imagine one day you're sitting quietly, you're kind of in a stupor, meditative mood. And there's this voice that comes into your head and it says, just put down the backpack. What's going to happen? And you're like, 
I can't put down the backpack. I've always worn this backpack. I can't put down this backpack. And, and this voice says, yes, you can just try it. And so you think, huh? Okay. So you take the backpack off and you're like, okay, this feels a bit weird, but it feels good. I'm not used to it, but it feels good. And you stand up and you're like, oh, wow, I feel so light. I feel so free. And you just feel amazing. But you're kind of looking around a little bit insecure, but you're thinking, no, but this feels good. I don't want to go back to the person I used to be who was carrying that backpack because that person was getting sick all the time from that weight and they were tired all the time and they were like, they were feeling drained all the time because of that backpack. I don't want to go back to wearing that backpack anymore. So you go out into the world and people see you and they're like, what's with you? You're different. You're looking amazing. Oh my gosh. And you, and you start telling them, it's like, it's that backpack on your back. You can put it down. And you say, no, I can't. And, and you say, yes, you can. It's actually your choice. You can just put it down and be free, free from the backpack. The backpack being the metaphor of all your past conditioning. And they tell you, and you tell them they can be free. Now imagine this, imagine if they tell you, no, I can't. How can I be free from all these problems that I've grown up with? How can you possibly undermine the fact that I've been abused and you're saying it's my fault that I was the victim, that it's up to me to stop, to put my backpack down? How dare you say it's my fault? And you will have people saying that to you. You may even lose friends. And eventually, you know what might happen? If you become so fearful of losing those friends, you may actually put your backpack back on so that you can again be like everybody else. And this is why transformation is so hard. Not because it's hard to let go of your past and die to who you were yesterday. That's not hard. Holding on to it is hard and bringing it into this paradigm, into, the, into your life and holding on to it. That's what's hard. This is why I tell people to be aware of this. Be aware of what the actual challenge is. The challenge is not <clears throat> in dropping your past programming. It's in living it in a culture or in a reality or a paradigm that you have created while you were wearing the backpack. You see, the life around you has been created while you were wearing the backpack. If you want to take off your backpack and live a life that is free of wearing a backpack, you need to create a new paradigm. So it's about changing yourself, but it's about realizing that you now have to go out and look for people who are also not wearing a backpack. You cannot continue to be among the people who are wearing backpacks and be the only one who's not. Now, I'm not saying neglect them, ditch them, be mean. You're not judging them. You're absolutely not judging them because you were one of them. You love them because you were one of them. But they may resent you for being the one that's doing well. They may resent you for being the one that's flying high. They may make you feel guilty. They'll point out to you all the other people who are suffering and saying, how can you ignore that? It's all very well for you. They, this is the kind of thing that people have said to me as well. You have the luxury of doing this, but what about all those poor starving people who don't have the luxury? Here's the thing. You cannot help those poor starving people if you are one of them. You cannot help them if you're still wearing the backpack. You need to be the one to inspire other people to take off their backpacks. That's what you need to be. And as people take off their backpacks one by one, they will, there will be a trickle effect. They will help those poor starving people to get to a place where they too will see a different world. So that's basically um, what I wanted to say is that you can die to who you were yesterday at any point in time. You just have to take off that backpack, that weight off your shoulders, and, and you have to be prepared that the paradigm around you may not be ready for it, 
because you have created that life while wearing the backpack. You created that life through the cultural conditioning that, um, that, you, that you were carrying. And so now you are the one that's changed. So it's not their fault. Don't get mad at them, but don't go back to being that person. You will inspire them. They will come around. And as you stay in that space of being this person, you will attract more people like you. You are creating a new paradigm for yourself. So the thing to do is to focus on, okay, if I am creating myself anew, who am I? Who do I want to be? I, have, I don't have that backpack anymore, but what do I want? Well, how do I want to see myself? Do I want to see myself as someone who's light, who's free, who's successful, who's creative? How do I feed that creativity? You have to stick to that view of yourself, which is the view created by who you are today, but without all the baggage, without the baggage. Um, so for me to do that, when I did that, I had to leave my surroundings. I literally had to leave. Thank God my husband was with me on the journey and he came with me, but I had to pick myself up from where I was and move to somewhere new where nobody knew me. So the person they got to know was the person who was already without the backpack. So they couldn't judge me. I hadn't changed. I hadn't become someone different to them. This is who they got to know. They got to know the person without the backpack. And it may take that for you to truly change. But um, really, that's what I wanted to tell you today. So thank you for listening. And now I would love to go to your questions. Thank you, Raquel Gonzalez. Oh, thank you. Your message is truly beautiful. Thank you for your, oh, you're so sweet. Thank you so much. Um, and what I'll do is, as my uh, wonderful intrepid husband, Danny, is looking for questions up and down, I'm going to cover a couple of questions that I saw from last week or that I've seen um, on my Facebook Live. One of them is a question from someone I think she wrote in, and she actually said, are empaths introverted? And I say, not necessarily not necessarily. You can be an extroverted empath. You can be an introverted empath. An empath is just someone who feels all the energies around them very strongly. And things that happen tend to get exaggerated in our head. So, but I know empaths who get recharged by being with other people. And if you get recharged by being with other people, that would kind of make you an extrovert. But I think mostly empaths are introverted, but not totally. I'm forced to be an extrovert because I speak to a lot of people, but I do recharge my batteries by being alone. So it could be a combination. But thanks for that question. Okay, so we have a question from Judy Villard Harris. I was terribly bullied by my classmates and my mom and siblings were so incredibly mean to me. I'm so sorry to hear that because I, I know how it feels to be bullied by your classmates. And your mom is still awful to you. And as a result, you've developed fibromyalgia. I was a doormat and still am. I'm working on taking my backpack off. How do you suggest I do this? Okay, so the thing is you need to get away from that environment. You really do need to get away and you need to wake up in the morning telling yourself that this is a fresh new day. I don't have to carry my past with me. It's, you do need to spend some time. It can be a week, it can be two weeks, it can be three weeks where you literally feel every day that this is a clean start, that I have died to who I am yesterday. And if, if you have such a strong conditioning that has su such a strong hold on you, you really do need to get away. And like I actually mentioned, I could not be this new person if I stayed in that environment. However, years later, as I became stronger in this new person, I was able to accept everybody back. I mean, I did not judge them because that was the environment I had surrounded myself in because that was the person I used to be. But, um, but several years later, after my life started taking off in a direction which I feel I was creating, because listen, you have two choices. When you're carrying the backpack, you're a victim of your life. 
when you are well when you let go of the backpack and you're free you are creating your life so i'm inviting you to create your life and i am not saying that it was your fault that you were the victim and i want to be clear but it is your choice to remain the victim or to let go and heal that and let go of that victimhood and to move forward and to create the life that you want and it doesn't mean you will be completely problem free but your new problems and your new issues will be the result of this new person who you are and the problems will be more manageable because you are creating this life from a place of consciousness and from a place of becoming somebody who you want to be as opposed from a conditioning that was not your choice something you couldn't control so all those layers were added from when you couldn't control it um in fact what i am actually starting to do now is i'm creating more um retreats and workshops that are 5 day 7 day long for this very reason because i realize that if somebody's been conditioned their whole life they want to learn to put the backpack down but they want to do it in an environment that it's safe to do it where you can actually be embedded with five uh, with with a class full of people for 5 days 7 days but even if you don't come to one of my retreats go away for 7 days or 14 days take a break take a holiday go to a new environment where nobody knows you and discover who you really are that's what it is it's about discovering who you really are without all the baggage around you that's so important that is actually that was actually equally if not more important in what i did for transformation than it was to actually die because i tell you if i can tell you this if it was more important to me to stay in the environment i had already created as the person who got cancer i would have just got cancer again so this is what drives me to even create these these new retreats that i'm doing it really is so that people are away from their environment in a safe place for 5 days 7 days so they can truly get it grounded into the feeling of who they truly are inside so um another question that i received um or i saw on facebook on on my facebook page was in fact a couple of people have asked this is when they have posted things from other teachers and they've said to me but so and so seems to contradict what you're saying um do you agree with their teaching so what i want to say is that every teacher as long as they're coming from a place of love it doesn't matter whether what we say contradicts each other it's about them coming from a place of love and about you following the teachers and following what they're teaching also from a place of love for yourself it's not about fear so as long as you're doing it from a place of love and you're not saying oh my gosh i got to do this because so and so said this if i don't do this this will happen that's a fear based reason but no if it's like oh that person's message resonates take it on board i don't care who it is um every teacher has their own truths and you're free to swap around or follow one or follow 10 you're a free bird this is not a cult so i want to make sure you know that you're free to follow who you want and not follow who you want and you're free to follow certain things from certain people and other things from others one thing i realized that i don't talk a lot about is i don't talk a lot about for example um diet reform and detoxing and and how to detox that's not my area of expertise and i'm aware there is so much information out there about it the the thing you have to do is follow what resonates with you and don't feel fear that oh if i don't do this if i don't um eat this or not eat this or don't juice or not juice or whatever i will get sick i will get cancer that's not the case follow whatever teacher has a message that resonates with you and if it feels like you're loving yourself by following them do it um wayne dyer used to always say how can i be of service how can i be of service um people have pointed out to me that could contradict what i say because i say love yourself and being of service is almost like being of service to everyone else 
and, uh, and it makes you a doormat. Actually, I don't see it that way. I think that the best way that you can be of service is by taking care of yourself. It's by loving yourself and taking off your backpack. And when you are light and free, which is what I feel right now, I can be of the most service to people because I am light and free and I took care of myself first. So the best way you can be of service, how can I be of service? I can be of service by being who I am, by being light and free, and by, be, by inspiring others to do the same. So many messages that you may think on the surface contradict each other, they actually don't. Sometimes when they're taken out of context, they may appear to contradict each other, but they actually don't. As long as the teacher is coming from a place of love, they won't contradict each other. And, and that was a very good question, which I feel needed to be explained. And have we got any more questions? People like to hear your voice, by the way. He's being awfully quiet. Where are your retreats? Okay, that is Sarah Jane Sutherland. Thank you. I will post them um, here, whether you're watching this on Facebook, YouTube, or my newsletter, I will post it on a link. But basically what I have coming up, I have a weekend here in Los Angeles coming up, but I have a... Um, Oh, okay, great. See, did you hear that voice? <laughs> that was him. So many people have been writing in and saying he has a great voice for radio and they want to see him. So oh, I have a weekend in um, Los Angeles coming up. And the thing is, if you attend this weekend, we're actually giving away for free for anyone who attends this, an online course. The online course is also for sale on its own. But um, I believe it's like a 20 week, uh, 20, it's, um, yes, it's 20 lessons online. And so this one is together with Michael Neal and it's called Experiencing God. And why we chose that title is because when you can experience that part of yourself that is connected to God, you realize there's no separation between you and God. So that's the next one coming up. And then I have Celebrate Your Life, which is a retreat with, with lots of my friends, other speakers, which is coming up in November in Arizona. And then I have some exciting long retreats coming next year, which is really what I've earmarked for next year. I have two coming up in Omega, five day retreats, two coming up at 1440, which is in Santa Cruz, five day retreats. And I have a seven day cruise coming up in June. I love these five day, seven day events, because as I say, that is where we can really get into some deep work of letting go of that past programming in an environment that's safe for you. I love the cruises uh, because there's something really special about being out in the middle of the ocean um, and, kind of, and you're kind of cut off. Because the other thing I warn you about the cruises is that the internet's not great. There is internet, you can get contacted in emergencies, you can check your emails, but, um, but people are discouraged from being on the internet all day long. And I think that is so good for you. It's, it's really part of the, of the programming cleanse, the programming detox that we go through. So have we got any more questions? We have indeed. We have I'm a... sure we have tons because usually after the event, I go back and it's like, oh my gosh, there's so many questions. We, have, we certainly have lots and lots of questions. I'm just scrolling through them as while we were pushing up the slides, I lost the next question that uh, I had in mind. Uh-oh. Um, but yeah, keep asking. And preferably if you have questions related to the subjects I've been talking about, that would actually be great. And by the way, thank you all for the love because sometimes I forget to say this. I forget to say how much I appreciate you guys. I think I have the best audience ever, 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 ever because you guys are so full of love. Your comments, sometimes they make me cry uh, in a good way. I mean, they make me overflow with love. And I just, you, you really feed me and recharge me with that. And I just love hearing back from you. And it is so rare that I get a comment that's negative or nasty. And I feel so blessed because the internet can be a minefield. And sometimes it's pretty scary, you know, when people put themselves out there. But uh, I have really, really, I'm so blessed because I really have got the best audience ever. So I just want to tell you how much I love you guys and how much you mean to me. And 
And why I do this is because I hear you. I hear you when you're in pain and you're suffering. And, and, and that's why I give you everything that I have. So have we got any burning questions? Indeed we do. I'm just scrolling through. A lot of these people are telling me, thank you for your voice, Danny. And uh, you're very, very welcome. I do hope you enjoy my, uh, my idle bantering while I uh, scroll through this. And uh, His radio voice. I think one day you should come on video. We should do a conversation together. Uh, I'm not 100% sure that that is a good idea. I think it's a great idea. I think people want to know what you went through when I went through what I went through. I think through. we can do a poll right here. That everybody okay, who wants post. to hear. I would love to hear from you. Do you think Danny and I should do a conversation together? Yes. Say yes. He can't see me right now. <laughs> Nothing? Nothing? <laughs> Please. And I'll get him to read the comments. I, I actually think we should do a conversation together. Dolce Vita. Hi. You are so inspiring and appeasing. Oh, thank you. Life is so amazing. Yes, it is. I was just talking about you to my best friend when I came across your video. Oh, thank you. Be blessed. Thank you. You be blessed too. Oh, see, that's what I mean. I really, I, I mean, you guys are just amazing. I wish that we, you, all of you and us, all of us could just hang out together and it would just be this amazing love fest. It really would. So thank you all. Let's go with one more question. I have a question here from Vanessa Diaz. I'll punch it up on screen for you. Hi, Vanessa. How do you know when it's time to move on from your environment? Great question, Vanessa. It's time to move on <clears throat> when it's draining you, when it's feeling more. Let me see if I can make this really easy. So are you escaping all the time? If, you're, if you go somewhere fun, like let's say if you go on holiday, imagine this, you go on this fabulous holiday right now. It's amazing. It feels like um, an adult Disneyland or something to you. It's whatever. It's your dream holiday. Are you dreading going back home? Are you kind of bummed that, oh, I got to go back home. I got to go. Um, that's the key. So because the thing is where I'm at right now, I love going back home. I love what I've created. I love doing what I'm doing. When I'm away from it, I go, I only take things, I only take opportunities like cruises and things because I love that. I love going away and I love going back home. And that's what ideally you're trying to create. So here's what happened, what actually told me I needed to move away from my environment. After I had the near-death experience and it was like the backpack had come off, and I was a clean slate. I died to who I was yesterday. I was excited. I was buzzed. And then when I went back home, I started to feel the weight coming back because I was getting the same old um, programming. And again, as I want to say, it wasn't their fault. Um, this was the environment I had chosen to be in when I was wearing the backpack. But it's I started to realize that everybody expected me to have the backpack, but I didn't have it anymore. But I started to realize when I went away from that environment, I felt fantastic and I dreaded going back. And even, for example, um, when Wayne Dyer discovered my story and I, started, and I started entering a new phase of my life of sharing my story and I had an audience and I was writing and I was doing all these things, but I was away from my environment to do that. I was coming to a different country. I was coming to America, but it's, it's irrelevant what country it is. It's about being in a new place where the people are around you feel like your tribe. They feel like they love the, new, the person who you are becoming and they are encouraging you to become the person who you are becoming as opposed to discouraging you. I would, I started, and so I was here temporarily and I started to feel every time I went home, I started to feel, oh man, I got to go back there. That's when you know it's time to leave. It's time to leave. When you start delaying tactics, if, you're, if you love your work and you keep delaying going home and you dread going home, these are all signs that it's time to leave. It's time to change your environment.
So thank you for that amazing question. Um, I really, really hope this was helpful for all of you. I love to hear your feedback because it's your feedback that drives me to do more and more. It's your feedback that helps me to um, know what it is you want to know. And so, um, and, and so this is what digs deeper into me. Because remember, having a near-death experience, it's not like just one dream and it's done. No, it changes your perspective of life. It makes you see life differently. So every experience I experience is different from this perspective than it would have been had I been that person with the backpack on my back, that person who was getting drained and sick. So, it's, so only by your questions, only by your feedback, can I keep coming up with content and answers for you. So I love to hear from you. Thank you so much. I would love to see you at my events. If you're at any of my events, come and say hey. And um, at events, I always try and come up with new content as well. So you're not hearing same old, same old. We try and create a different energy so that we can all feel really good together and, and really get on a, on a higher frequency together. Thank you for tuning in and see you next week, if not sooner. Bye.